Hi guys, firstly this is not a paid promotion, however I would make a small commission if you decide to purchase the plugin through the Dehancer website and use the promo code RACHARMERS, that's R-A-C-H-A-L-M-E-R-S in uppercase letters. I seriously love this plugin and use it a lot so I decided it's a good time to share the knowledge by doing a short walkthrough on the platforms I do use. It also runs on Windows and others but I don't use them much. So let's look at the Hanser and see what it is on the Apple platforms, the Mac, the iPad and so on. The Hanser Film Pro is a powerful plugin for Affinity Photo and Final Cut Pro X that allows creatives to achieve professional looking film emulation effects in their photos and videos. It offers a wide range of features including accurate film emulation. The Hanser Film Pro uses a proprietary algorithm to accurately emulate the look and feel of different film stocks. This means that you can achieve the same look and feel as your favourite movies and TV shows without having to spend a fortune on expensive film cameras and film stock. Extensive customization options are also available. The Hanser Film Pro offers a wide range of customization options so you can create the perfect look for your project. You can adjust the gain, the colour, the contrast and saturation to your liking and you can even add lens flares and other effects. It's very easy to use. Dehancer Film Pro is very easy to use, even for beginners. The plugin has a simple and intuitive interface and it comes with a variety of presets to get you started. Here are some of the benefits of using Dehancer Film Pro for Affinity Photo and Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Pro X as it used to be called. Create unique and visually appealing content. Dehancer Film Pro can help you create unique and visually appealing content that will stand out from the crowd. Whether you're a photographer, filmmaker or designer, Dehancer Film Pro can help you add a touch of professionalism to your work. Save time and money, and don't we all love that? Dehancer Film Pro can help you save time and money by allowing you to achieve film emulation effects without having to use extensive or expensive film cameras and film stock. This is especially beneficial for small businesses and independent creatives. Increase your creative flexibility. Love it. The Hanser Film Pro gives you the creative freedom to experiment with different looks and feels. You can use the plugin to create a wide range of effects from subtle and realistic to bold and stylized. Overall, Dehancer Film Pro is a great tool for creatives who want to achieve professional looking film emulation effects in their photos and videos. It's easy to use, offers a wide range of features and can help you save time and money. Here are some specific examples of how Dehancer Film Pro can be used for creative purposes. A photographer could use Dehancer Film Pro to give their photos a classic film look or to create a more modern and cinematic look. A filmmaker could use Dehancer Film Pro to give their videos a specific mood or atmosphere or to match the look of a particular film genre. A designer could use Dehancer Film Pro to create visually appealing graphics and marketing materials. Overall, Dehancer Film Pro is a powerful and versatile tool that can be used by creatives of all levels to achieve professional looking results. And as I mentioned, indeed, you can even save 10% on the price by using the code RHARMERS in the purchase option on the Dehancer.com website. So now let's have a look at the walkthrough on the options that I'm going to show you. Now what you can see here is the original image. This is a, an AI generated image supposedly of Jesus walking down Main Street, New York. Um, but there you go, you can take that as you will. 
but it's the original AI-generated image. I mean, why go looking for your own images when AI can generate images for you for this kind of work? Now, this is the power of Dehancer. Dehancer doesn't just colorize your photo. What Dehancer does is change the image as if it's using the film. Now, let's have a look. Let's scroll up the presets here. The last edits was a Loma Chrome Purple XR 100 to 400 film. Now, let's see what that looked like. And you can see that's changed it to that. The whole film is quite different. It's not just an overlay, it's actually changing the film type. Now, the Adox Color Implosion, the next one, I really like this one. You can see the noise in that. That's quite incredible. Can we enlarge that? We can. Look at that. Now, that's, that's quite impressive. You could certainly use that to give dramatic effect. The next one, Ag for Color, and Ag for Color 100. And you can see that's quite, quite different, but still noisy. It's film, you see. It's actually supposing to be film. Now, there's some amber type one, completely different. That's almost a sepia tone and very noisy. Fuji Externa Vivid 500. Again, quite different. Now, these are, these are quite impressive. Don't worry about the Dehancer film emulation uh, watermark in the middle of it. I'm using this on my iPad Mini 6. Not a big iPad, iPad Mini 6, and it runs fine on here. Now, I don't just want to colorize one or two bits of the film. What I'm looking at is changing the film. And we can go right through there. Now, there's quite a few of them. There's actually hundreds of them. There's a Fuji film. Again, there's an Ilford. Now, that's definitely black and white. There's Kodak Aero Color. Now, Kodak's got some really good film types. Of course, they should have. Kodak Aero Color, Kodak Eastman Double, Kodak Ektor 25. I don't have the Kodak that they used in the original Blade Runner 1986 film, but maybe they're working on it. The Kodak Ektor 25. Again, colorizes the whole thing. Kodak Gold. These are fabulous film effects. Kodak Chroma 64. Again, now that's a, that's quite hmm. Kodak Porter 400 Endura. We could go on through these. Kodak Vision 3. There's the Loma Chrome one. Okay, now that'll do for the moment because what I want to show you is the same thing. There we go, look at that. That's got some nice blues in there. Let's pause it there, shall we? So let's have a look at this on the, um, on the Mac. Now this is Affinity Photo on the Mac and I've just loaded this image from the stock images. Um, Let's have a look there, stock. Okay, it's on Pixabay, it's just an image of a city. Behind that I've got an image of a couple kissing, which is already very low light. But what I want to show you with these, turn that one back on. Now we'll go up here to the filters, the plugins, and Dehancer is installed on this, and a valid copy, Dehancer Film, we'll just turn it on so that we've got the film type. Now you can see it's got a preview in the window there. The last time I tried this was Adox Color Implosion 100, but let's have a look at a different one. There's Saverna black and white, and you can see it's not altering the image, but it is altering the preview. Now there's a Polaroid one, and you can see the quite a difference it makes. There's another film. Now this, as I mentioned in the one on the iPad, which still has the watermark on it, and you can see this one is a registered copy, so it doesn't have the watermark on it. What I'd really like 
is to have the one on the iPad because I do a lot of work on the iPad. There's Luma Chrome, different versions of that. There's the Kodak. I really like the Kodak ones. You can see it's not changing that much there, but it is a bit. Now remember, this is not an overlay. This is actually changing the film type. As if you were shooting with this film in camera. Not digital, but film. There we go. Different ones. Fujifilm. Fujifilm was very popular, but you can see the differences it makes to the actual result. And you can get some... There's a quite cool um, film, that one. That one's mm, more warmer colours. That one's mm, quite dark, that one. And you can see down here, we've got the the variations. There's Ag for Colour. Amber Type and Adox Colour. Now that one's a very grainy film. You could have some fun with that. That one's very grainy. Now if you want to change the film type over there, you just click OK. And there it is. You can see the high grain type in that one. Let's see how that looks. We'll turn that off and just leave that one selected. And again, we'll go up here to the filters, plugins, dehancer and the dehancer film. Now, we don't want the last edit one on that. We'll just go back to the original. There's our preview. And you can see it sitting there just behind the preview. What I want to do is really bring that up to a different colour. You can see the girl's jumper there is yellow. And in this one here with the Loma Chrome purple, it puts, every, it puts a real purple cast on everything, even in the background. Let's go back to the original. Original. And you can see the background. Now if we go down to the Loma Chrome again one, purple, there's lots of purple in that. But maybe we don't want that. We want that one. That's a warmer skin tones. There's lots of black and white variations there. The Ilford Super 400. I remember that film. That film type. Not the film itself, of course, because it's not about a film. Let's find the Luma Chrome Vivid. There we go. Now you can see that's brought the face up a bit and it's and it's a bit more vivid, the colours. And if we like, we can click OK, and that one sets that there. Now I can save those, or, well, in fact, you can do anything you like with them. Now this is fairly important, using these film types like this, because what you can do on here, with one, especially one like that, that's very high grain, um, and has the has that film type set. Let's go see if we can get back to the film type. And that's that one there. You can see it's the Fuji Eterna Vivid 500. Okay, now we're having a look at Dehancer being used in Final Cut Pro. And you can see here what I have is three images I've taken with the, just with the camera, DLSR camera, and I've applied the Kodak Vision 3 to the film. Same with that one, and the same with that one. They're just three images dropped along the timeline, and I'll show you that running. If we go along like that, there's that clip swiping through, and that clip swiping through. But you can see that it gives you the same look and feel, if you like, the same mood for your photos. All of those clips. Now I can change that by selecting that. Now I can go to Kodak Ultramax 400 and you can see it's just warmed the tone of that one up a little bit compared to that one, compared to that one. You can see the difference in tone. Go to there now, what did I say that one was? Kodak Ultramax. We'll go back to that one and change that to Kodak Ultramax 400. And we'll go back to the first one, which is 
Vision 3 to 50D, but I want it Ultramax 400. And there we go. Now there's the same image, well not the same image, but the same film type being used across all images. What more could you want than that? That's a beautiful example of how to use that whole thing. Now let me go back to the start of that. We'll have a look at the film effects I've got in this one. Go back to the start of that one. Now this one skips across and you can see I have applied Dehancer in that but I've also used that for making some film effects. Let's stop that one. And reduce the size of it. I don't think there's anything further along there. So we've got that one selected. Let's go to Dehancer. And I want to set the film type to one that I really like. Is that one there? Prakudin Gorski. And you can see it's changed the value considerably. Slows the processing down a little bit and this is an M2 Mac Mini. And that's a little bit surprising, but I've got a lot I've got a lot going on here at the moment because I'm recording this screen at the same time. But there we go. I won't worry too much about Dehancer and the rest of it because I wanted to show you what it does um, in Affinity Photo, which is the last one we were doing, which is that one there. Let's go down to find it again. Last project. Does this indicate I've got far too many projects in here? There we go. Okay. That's the start of that. Let's run that through. And you can see that. Okay, and that's the film that I'm producing right now. And I could, in fact, use Dehancer even on that, but I won't. You can see I just touched the Dehancer control and it changed the film. But I don't want to do that because that's really going to mess up what I'm trying to demonstrate. Let's stop this image right there.